Okay, so we kind of went over on our last one. Uh, we got to keep it under 10 minutes for you two, but uh, your prediction was 35-32, Arkansas in a thriller over Bama. Is that right? There you go. A thriller. I, uh, let's say a, a last-second field goal by our freshman kicker to, to put it, put it, to end it. Is he a true freshman? I think it's that Hawker kid. I don't know if he's a true freshman. I'm pretty sure he is. With all the kicking struggles we had last year, I don't see why they would have kept a red shirt on him. No, well, I'm sitting here looking at the field still. I got Cade Foster, freshman. His name is Zach Hawker. Zach Hawker. Well, that shows you that shows you how much it changes. Cause in uh, Phil Steele's magazine, he's not even in here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's a true freshman. Our, our punter is uh, actually a Birmingham kid. Yeah. Uh, actually, I think he might be from Hoover. Uh oh. Well, on on my prediction, I you know I watched Arkansas Georgia last week. I watched the whole game. Took me about five hours on my um, my TiVo. Right. But uh, <laughs> I, I I didn't see I didn't see anything on there that that tells me that that their defense is going to be able to match up with Alabama's offense. I I think I think that um I think that Arkansas is going to be able to move the ball pretty good. Because I, I think the way Mallet was destroyed and that whole system was destroyed in Tuscaloosa last year, I think that's given them food for thought all year long, and I think they're going to come out well prepared. Um, however, I think if this game's going to go in a shooting match, I, I truly believe Alabama's going to get the best of the shooting match aspect of it because, you know, their running game, and, and I really like McElroy being a senior and uh, having that championship under his belt. I, I really, I really like that kid. But on the flip side of that, you know, Fayetteville is – I've never been in a game in Fayetteville because y'all always have to play us in Little Rock, and that really right, sucks, right. by the way. I, I wish you would tell the people I hate going to Little Rock. You know, I want to go to that <laughs> nice stadium in Fayetteville. That's, um, a, that's a big hot topic issue around here. <laughs> But I think Arkansas is going to score a lot of points, and I think 35-32 looks pretty good. But I'm, I'm going to, I'm just going to switch it and say Bama's going to win the shootout based on yeah. the the running backs and McElroy. And I think McElroy is going to be less apt to have to win the game by himself the way Mallet does. Yeah. And, and, and I think Mallet gets in that mindset, even though he's a first round draft choice, he's going to have a wonderful pro career. You know, I think it's going to be – the onus is going to be on Mallet not to – because all it's going to take not is to one lose. or two interceptions, you know. Yeah, yeah. If Mallet doesn't go out and lose it, we got a chance. Oh, I, I think so, big time. But I really yeah. – I really look – this is going to tell me if Alabama's back or not, if they can handle, you know – I can't wait to see Alabama secondary against Arkansas, against you guys. This is going to be yeah. – this is the game I've been waiting for all year. And, yep. you know, they're just a bunch of – they're young kids back there. They might be four- and five-star recruits, but they're still young kids. Yeah, and that's the thing. They're all, you know, you know top-of-the-line recruits, blue chippers. But, you know, just like you said, they've got a uh, – you know, there's a big transition from, from being five stars lit up on a, a recruiting sheet to, you know, looking across from an SEC receiver. Yeah, especially, you know – a quarterback like Mallet and the receivers y'all got. So, and plus yeah. the master offensive mind that you got in Petrino. So we'll see. Right. What What about this? Um, <clears throat> what about this game? Uh, this this um, who we got? South Carolina and Auburn's playing. Yeah, I would say that's probably the other big game in the league this week. Yeah. Uh, and again, I kind of feel a, a, a real similar to it as I do this Alabama Arkansas game in that. There's still a lot of what ifs in my mind on South Carolina. Uh, I, I think they've, you know, stepped it up a notch, but uh, you know, I, I don't know for sure. And guys, if, if Auburn could play the, the whole game like they played the second half, they'll they're top ten team. But if they're, you know, if they're the team that showed up in the first half against Clemson, they're they'll be fighting with you know Mississippi State and Ole Miss for the last play. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's hard to tell. You know, it's week four. 
everybody played a couple of cupcakes and, you know, kind of squeaked by a, a conference opponent. Uh, you know, not a conference opponent with Clemson, but, you know, a good a good high D1 school. Uh, I think there's a still a, a, lot of, a lot of measuring left to be done. And I think this week is going to be a, a big week to kind of, kind of tell us what, what everybody has. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this the South Carolina and Auburn game is two teams trying to prove themselves. You know, yeah. Auburn had a hell of a test last week against Clemson. Yeah. Um, and But, you know, yeah. that, that Cam Newton whole thing, I, I think – I give the edge to South Carolina because I, I don't think – I don't think Cam Newton's ready to, to, to win a game by himself, and I think that's what it's going to come down to. I didn't yeah. see anything from the Auburn defense at yeah. all. You know, yeah, but they I, are. I, don't. I'm just not a. I'm not a. I'm not, not a believer in Stephen Garcia to, to give them to give them the edge on the road. Uh, so I'm gonna go with Auburn on that. Uh, you know, maybe a touchdown. Damn. Okay. Yeah. I mean, this this is a big test for 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 uh, Spurrier. You know. Yeah. I mean, this well, is their. Spurrier's, Spurrier's got to be up there licking his lips. This is the year for him to win the East. Florida's yeah. down. Tennessee is not a factor whatsoever. Uh, Georgia, you know, Georgia's a, a pick on this week against Mississippi State, and if they lose that game, they're 0-3 in conference. So, Spurrier's sitting up there saying, man, if this is the year I'm going to win, the, if I'm going to play in a championship game, it's, it's, it's got to be this year. Yeah, but I, 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 you know? I, I'll tell you what about Georgia. I mean, you know, they were a, a first-round draft choice quarterback and three plays away from winning that game against you guys last week. They, they played oh. good. I, I totally agree. I, I totally agree. They uh, they had a, they had a lot of chances to, to to fold it up and call it a day, and they they kept battling. Uh, I think I think we got a little bit too conservative and and tried to start running the clock out. Yeah. Uh, and, and let them get back in that game on. But, yeah, I, I think uh, I think y'all counted your chickens a little too too early. Wait, looking ahead to Bama, oh, yeah. probably. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. But that's another big game. Mississippi State, you know, is, I think Georgia's at Mississippi State this week. Uh, <laughs> Georgia's a must win for Georgia. I mean, I, all, all I can say is Mark Rick better win that game or he's gone. Yeah. You know. He, you know, he's, I heard a thing the other day where in his, I think this is might be his 10th year at Georgia. Yeah. And he's averaged over his nine years, he's averaged 10 wins a year. Uh it's gonna be hard to get to ten wins starting zero and three in, in the conference. No, he he won't be around next year if that happens. So we got let's I, I see, uh, we got what two minutes left, and we got LSU playing West Virginia, which you know a couple years ago would have been a huge game. Um, yeah. Well, you know, I don't know what to think about this one because I just you know we're playing the best defense we've played in three years, uh, but you know we have horrible quarterback play. It, it, I was just about to say your quarterback has to scare you to death. So. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, if we had if we had Ryan Mallett at at LSU, we would be serious national championship contenders. The way we're playing. Oh, I, I agree. That, that that could be said for a lot of teams with, with with him. I think. Yeah. Yeah, West Virginia. You know, what you, it's it's the Big East. You know, it's their last uh, their last excuse to be an automatic qualifier this year. I mean. Cincinnati's done. There's really nobody else in the Big East. So, you know, West Virginia is, is their last, you know, prayer of beating a, another big-time conference, which I don't see it happening. That's, that's that. That's in Baton Rouge, isn't it? Yeah, it's in Baton Rouge. Yeah, night game? Yeah, it's a night game. Actually, it starts at 8 o'clock, which is perfect for oh, us LSU God. fans. Yeah. All day to tailgate. They're, they're going uh, to they'll lose by 20. Yeah, I, I, I'm thinking, you know, I, I, I'm thinking we should win the game, but, yeah. you know, I, I don't if gonna, know. If you're going to catch LSU at home, you hope for that 11 o'clock Jefferson Pilot broadcast. Yeah. You know. Or 2.30. Uh, you to play on that late ESPN game. Yeah. Or, or what about or what about 2.30 when we're number one in the nation and you got McFadden and Jones in the backfield? That's a good time, too, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, the quicker you can get the fans in and out, the better. I like those 11 o'clock starts down there. So, okay, look, we got 15 seconds left. So what you're telling me so far is life is good without Houston Dale, huh? Yeah, 
It's awesome. I, I think uh, I think some old Miss fans are probably starting to see the writing on the wall down there in Oxford as well.